Who are you trying to get crazy with this, see? Don't you know I'm local? I'm not inside. <laughs> An innocent man sits in prison, a victim of a corrupt, malicious justice system and a police department that target people who've done nothing wrong. Poor Nick Bates. Look at these headlines. In fact, let's, let's read one of them. This is from the 30th of April. Columbia man arrested for child sexual abuse. Washington Bureau, PA. A Lancaster County man has been arrested for the sexual assault of a child who was five years old when the alleged abuse began. Manor Township Police said they charged Nicholas B. Strautzenberger, 23 of Columbia, with one count of involuntary deviant sexual intercourse with a child and three counts of indecent assault of a child. The sexual assaults occurred at Washington Bureau in 2009 and 2010 when the girl was between the ages of five and seven years old. Strautzenberger was committed to Lancaster County Prison on a $150,000 bail. Well, that is atrocious. And I am here to plead the case that Nicholas B. Strautzenberger, a.k.a. Nick Bates, didn't do nothing. We're going to look through the facts. This is a man who has repeatedly denied that he has molested his half-sister, as evidenced by this tweet from May 19, 2011. Why does everyone think I molested my half-sister? This clearly isn't true, or I'd be in jail by now. I don't know where people are getting this idea that this saintly individual would ever harm the hair of a single child. So we're going to look at the evidence. We're going we're gonna to go through Nick Bates's history, and we're going to see where this slanderous, libelous lie originated from. So just why is it that the police and the legal system and all those horribly wicked, slanderous trolls on the internet would target this cherub, this beautiful individual? Why would they harass him and lead to him getting arrested for a crime he obviously didn't commit? Well, I think... It has to do with his character, his abilities, his talent. Now, you may not know this, but Nick Bates is a renowned artist. In fact, he's released multiple music albums. He is a, a singer, a songwriter. He plays instruments. And he's used those skills to release these albums on the Internet for free for anybody to listen to. I want you to hear a selection of his amazing music. Because I think a core component of what's going on here is a little bit of jealousy. Maybe that district attorney just isn't as good as he thinks he is in his barbershop quartet, and he can't handle the fact that Nick Bates is such hot shit. Maybe the cow board is a little angry that this sexy, sexy man has the voice of an angel. I don't know. But we're going we're gonna to listen to a few of his songs. I've compiled them for you and overlaid some video of Nick dancing in revelry to his own music making. So let's take a listen. I'm going to do my wife. And also some children in their butts. But the latter is only if my wife says I can, which she probably won't. So I guess I'll just do my wife. Ain't no way! Ain't only raping children and disemboweling and force feeding them their own intestines. Encore. That is a danceable beat. That little ditty, I could be humming that for the next week. That's the kind of song that sticks in your head and you want to share with everybody. So after seeing musical ability like that, I think it's pretty obvious why some people might be upset and want to take them down a peg because they can't compete with that raw fucking talent. Of course, there are going to be people out there who are going to say, wait a minute, Jim. It's not just that Nick Bates is an amazing artiste. It's not just that he has an award-winning smile. There's more to it than that. It's not fair that you don't show people the conversation he had with Anna. Well, let's dive into that. Let's take a look at this nefarious character who is obviously trying to hurt Nick in every conceivable way possible. And let's look at the conversation that took place. Anna, who was it? Nick, uh, 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 Anna. Oh my god, come on, I'm getting excited. Nick, yeah, right now, but once I tell you, you'll think I'm a pedo. I mean, I kinda am, but still. Anna, it was Amber, wasn't it? Nick, uh, maybe. Anna, are you being serious? Nick, yeah, she kinda coerced me. Anna, what does that mean? 
Nick. Well, like we always talked about, me and Joe are going to do sexually, and then eventually Amber wanted to do sexual things, and yeah. One day, she was just like, Welp, I'm gonna suck your penis. Anna. Wait, how old was she? Nick. Uh, well, she's nine now, so I don't know, eight maybe? Yeah, she's pretty fucked up to be a rapist at eight. Anna. A bwahaha. Nick. Yeah. Not my best moment. Anna. Damn, you're fucked up. Nick. She started it. Well, um, Amber doesn't know how to wipe, so when I went to lick her butt, there was feces everywhere. So I just licked the cheeks instead. Anna. What? Nick. What? Anna. You licked your eight-year-old half-sister's shitty butthole? Nick. No, just the cheeks. Anna. What the fuck? Nick. I couldn't lick the hole because it was shitty. Which sucks because I want to lick an anus, damn it. Anna. Yeah, but your eight-year-old half-sisters? Nick. Well, I didn't have anyone else. Anna. Dear God. Nick. So yeah. Oh, that's right. I've had my anus licked too. It actually feels pretty good, but I still prefer to do the licking myself. Anna. Who the hell did that? Nick. Amber. And it's clear from this conversation that Anna has entrapped this poor man. She's using his feelings for her to destroy him. You see, the thing you need to know is Nick, he was in love. He loved her so much that he actually drew art for her. That's right, he's not just a musician. This is a man who wears many hats. And one of those hats is graphic designer. Now this is the too hot for television version of the erotica that he drew for. I'll have links in the description. If you want to go and look up any of this, go into the description and you can you can go take a look yourself if you want the uncensored hotness. But Nick, Nick loved her. And Anna broke his heart because she is a cruel woman who entraps him into saying these absurd things and then just leaves him when she gets bored. You can actually see just how much Nick cared for her. They had another conversation where he, he talks about the things that he likes. So let's read some of that. And we'll listen as Nick pours his heart and soul out to this woman. Nick. Yeah, I often wonder what color her anus is. Because, like, some are pink, some are brown. Uh, I think there's purple and white and red, too. Anna. What? Nick. What what? Anna. That is gross. Nick, not really. Anuses are my favorite body part. Although, it's also fun to try to picture her whole butt, too. Because, like, she has those wide hips. And also, she once told me she has a scar on her butt from sitting on broken glass. Anna, wah ha 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 Nick, also, she has acne on her boobs. Anna, ugh, you? Nick, what? I like acne. Anna, oh my god. You gonna pop them while you screw her? Nick, no. Anna, ha 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 ha. Nick. But if they look enough like a nipple, I might lick them or something. I don't know. Anna. Oh my god, that's disgusting. Nick. You don't approve of any of my fetishes. Anna. What? Acne? Nick. All of them. Anna. Uh, I don't even know what other fetishes you have. Nick. Oh well, you know about all the butt ones. Anna. Oh yeah. Well, that's okay. But you are like obsessed and I don't get why you don't like vagina. Nick. Because they're gross. This man is a, a connoisseur. Of fetishes. He doesn't want those gross vaginas. He wants to suck the pus out of pimples and lick shitty assholes. He has high quality tastes. And Anna just couldn't handle that, so she left him. But Nick, Nick loved her. And he is convinced that she still loves him. What a caring man he is. You can see from past conversations he's had about this when it's been brought up about his relationship with Anna that he knows best. They are soulmates. Anna just needs to realize that, that he is in no way stalking her. That's a silly accusation, and that she just doesn't understand what love really is. And who better to teach her than this Lothario, this ladies' man, this gentle, gentle giant. Now, I personally think she took advantage of this sweet, sweet man, but Nick, he holds out hope. Years and years after, they stopped having any contact. Here's a, a posting he put up on a personal journal called Explanation from June 16th, 2011. Explanation. Sup. My old account was Harguruman, but lately a bunch of jerk chantards have been hijacking all my accounts and changing the passwords. It's a long story, but basically they think I'm a lulz cow just because I have a bunch of weird fetishes and I'm all nerdy and stuff. There's a bunch of threads about me on an image board and posters have been trying to get me arrested for molesting my half-sister, even though I can prove that I didn't. But of course, they don't listen to a word I say. 
It's also been floating around that I'm stalking someone, but that's not true either. The real story is that I met this girl, Anna, back in 05, fell in love with her, and then on August 23rd, 2008, she randomly decided to start hating me and told all her friends I'm creepy, a stalker, an idiot, etc. So now tons of people on the internet hate me. So that's nice. It'll probably be a while until I post any art or anything. I lack a scanner. Well, that to me, that sounds like true love. He remembers the exact day she said, stay the fuck away from me. It was August 23rd of 2008. Not the 21st, not the 28th, it was the 23rd, the specific day. He has it memorized, and that is not creepy at all. But of course, those horrible chantards just can't let him have the relationship he knows he deserves, even if everybody else thinks otherwise. And yet Nick will not be deterred. Over the years, and I do mean years, multiple people have tried to tell him to stop pursuing Anna, but he has stayed the course. I mean, just look at this exchange from June 2010, the SMS Titanic. Finally, some new news. Okay, so basically it started yesterday when I decided to try sending Anna a text message. Here are the contents. Hey Anna, it's me, Nick Straussenberger. Whatever. But yeah, it's been a while so I was wondering if you'd want to talk or whatever. I mean, not much has changed with me other than I started listening to new bands. JOJ, Starling, RBF, you know, read the other two books you told me to, too. Loved them. Also been playing a lot of Pokemon in Final Fantasy VII. You should play the PC version. Painting my aunt's apartment for money, etc. Plus, I'm less annoying. So yeah, I'm curious as to how you've been doing. So I guess, give me a holler. See ya. Wait, why did I say that when this is text and not live? Okay, now I want you to notice something. There is absolutely nothing sexual or even romantic in it, right? The whole thing was a chillax, like, hey, what's up, man? I did this on purpose, hoping maybe, like, it bring back memories of back when we were still friends. Well, anyway, a few minutes ago, this happened. The other person is Kate again? Miles Edgeworth. Never. I repeat, never text Anna again, or I swear to God, I will chop your balls off and feed them to you. Mm-kay? Nick. What? Miles Edgeworth. You heard me, or are you illiterate now? Nick. No, I'm not illiterate, but why can't I text her? Miles Edgeworth. Because she doesn't want you to. It upsets her. If you really want to say something to her, say it to me and I'll tell her. Nick, I didn't even say anything bad. Miles Edgeworth, I know, but she doesn't like to hear from you. You creep her out, possibly because you posted private information about her on your site. Nick, literally the whole thing was all chillax, hey, what's up? What? Miles Edgeworth, I understand that, but when someone hates you, you don't write to them saying, hey, what's up? And trying to do so will not make her like you. Nick, then what on earth will? Miles Edgeworth, nothing. Absolutely nothing. She will hate you until the day she dies. And nothing you will do will ever change that. Every time you try, she just hates you all the more for it. Nick, uh, no. Miles Edgeworth, uh, yes. Seriously, listen very, very closely. She hates you so much, she wants to kill you. In a painful manner. Okay? Nick, I'm aware of this. Miles Edgeworth, and the only thing that will change that is if you back the fuck off. Nick, I don't think you realize that people can change their minds about such things. Now, for the sake of brevity, I'd like to cut in here and say that this was a very long conversation, but I think you get the gist of it. This Miles Edgeworth obviously is a, a troll. But here is how the conversation ended. Miles Edgeworth, you are just that stupid. Nick, because she will. It has nothing to do with intelligence or stupidity. It's just the truth. Miles Edgeworth, I give up. Nick will not be deterred, even when people openly tell him that she hates him, and she's creeped off by him, and she never, ever, ever wants to speak to him again. That is love. I mean, just what about Nick creeps her out? Sure, he has a few fetishes, but who doesn't? Just because the man likes to suck pus out of pimples and lick shitty assholes doesn't mean he's not a human being with feelings. And he's so good at expressing those feelings. Like this live journal post from 2009, My Bedroom Door Needs a Lock. And I have to apologize, the formatting is so fucking horrible on LiveJournal that this is the best I could make it look. I had to highlight the lettering to make it readable. When I returned home from my dad's last week, I was shocked to find two things very wrong with my room. Both courtesy of my aunt. One, the first thing I noticed was that, dude, my big bag filled with women's clothes I had hidden and my closet was gone. <laughs> 
This may have been my own fault because I left it sitting there in the closet itself, rather than the mini closet inside a closet that it's normally in. Easier access, you know? But yeah, the easier access screwed me over. Not entirely sure why my aunt was in my closet in the first place, though. I mean, the door's closed, and it's behind my bed. You literally have to move my bed to get that door open. Plus, nobody knew that I ever used it before. Hmm. But yeah, my awesome skirt is gone, and now I'm pissed. For those of you who didn't catch it by now, I'm a cross-dresser, and my entire family consists of conservative bigots, too. As if I wasn't already distraught enough over not being able to cross-dress anymore, I later noticed that my pillow had been replaced. Apparently, my aunt and grandmother thought they were being nice by throwing out my old, dirty pillows for new, clean ones. See, for the past few years, I've had this special pillow that I basically pretend is Anna and cuddle with, you know, just until I can cuddle with the real thing. Plus, I roleplay with it and do the voices for both me and her. Of course, I still do the latter even without the pillow, but still, anyway, dude, throwing out the Anna pillow is massively uncool. By doing it, you're wiping some of the history of me and Anna's relationship from existence. Like the time my aunt changed a letter in one of the letters Anna sent me. I now carry all Anna-related articles on me at all times to prevent this from happening again. Needless to say, I cried for hours and am still crying on the inside and the new pillow isn't helping me by being a crappy cuddler. Sigh. I am sad. Now, I'm not sure what's creepy about that. I mean, the man is a cuddler. Sure, it's been a year since he's seen Anna, and she told him to never contact her again, but his feelings remain true. I should probably have mentioned he's a cross-dresser. He likes to dress up in lady clothes. But who doesn't? It's a perfectly normal thing to do. If only his bigoted conservative family could just understand that this is how he likes to live his life. Personally, I find his family to be reprehensible. I mean, they force this poor man to take showers. Can you fucking believe that? Nick explains it pretty well in this, uh, this posting in a thread. No, I use soap and shampoo and stuff. The thing that makes it pseudo is that I don't actually get in the tub. I keep my pants on and crouch down, leaned over the tub so that when I wash my hair, the water and shampoo drain into it. One thing you should know about Nick is he hates taking baths or showers. He prefers to only do it once a month. And he's explicitly stated this on Twitter and other social media accounts many, many times. But his conservative family refuses to let him express himself. So what if he doesn't want to bathe and he wants to wear women's clothing and he likes to smear shit on the walls? Did I mention he likes to paint with shit? But again, this conservative family, they're just bigots. Fucking Republicans, am I right? Hell, they won't even let him pursue the things that he wants to pursue. Like making a flash game where you gobble up shit that falls from the sky. Or having a bonding ritual where you shove the feces of another person up your anus and then have them take your feces and shove it up their anus. In this case, that someone would be Maddie, an underage girl he talked to, but that's, that's you know, it's irrelevant. It's not important. What's important is they are oppressing him and making him repress the things he's interested in. And what other interests are they making him repress? Well, I'll let Nick explain it himself. Okay, obviously rape is bad. I'm not saying legalize rape. I'm saying legalize consensual pedophilia. Consensual. I am a pedo. But that's not illegal as long as you don't actually do any children. So as you can imagine, some conservatives decided to come into the thread and harass him for expressing himself. But Nick held his own. He told them it was extremely ageist to not want to have sex with children. And in response to somebody saying, would you really fuck a child? Yes, if the children are okay with it. But don't think that means he molested anybody. He didn't. He vehemently denies that. Sons of bitches, I made the molesting thing up. Why do you not get this? I mean, duh. Just because the man expresses that he is a pedophile and made a statement to somebody he was in love with that he likes to molest children and that he in fact did molest children doesn't mean he actually molested anybody. Get it through your fucking head, conservatards. But it isn't just the Chantard trolls or Anna the Heartbreaker or even his conservative parents that are keeping him down. There's somebody else. Somebody else who's out to trip him up. The seven and a half year old half-sister, Amber. You can see how hard Nick tried to fend her off, but she wouldn't leave him alone. My seven-year-old half-sister is masturbating in front of me. Um, should I be concerned? Why does my half-sister constantly smell like human feces? 
Okay, Amber, stop asking me to kiss you on the lips. You're my half-sister, and you're not even hot, and I think it might be illegal, too. Uh, Amber keeps asking to fillet me and other sexual things. I decline, obviously, but, like, she's making me feel uncomfortable and dirty. Using reverse psychology to get Amber to do stupid stuff, fun. Stop touching my penis, Amber. Wait a minute. What? Nah, nah, sorry. Got lost in thought there. I'm seeing something that obviously isn't there. And of course, Amber is out to get him in as much trouble as possible. Also, apparently Steve found an erotica I wrote on Amber's laptop, and now I'm not allowed at Mom's house or near Amber anymore. You know, I think, I think Nick sums it up best. How are pedophilia and corpophilia any more creepy than any other fetishes? So with all these forces aligned against him, what is Nick to do? A corrupt police force and judicial system? Conservative parents? Chantard trolls, Anna the Heartbreaker, and maybe, maybe the worst of all, would be the preteen temptress Amber herself, all trying to bring him down a notch. How is Nick going to defend himself? He even expressed his own confusion over this. I wonder if my half sister actually believes I did it, or if she's just lying. Maybe she had a dream or hallucination she thought was real. Dude, what? No, my half sister herself is accusing me of molesting her. Obviously, I didn't, but I have no idea who to defend myself here. But Nick's not completely down and out yet. He has come up with perhaps the most brilliant legal strategy that has ever been thought of by a defendant in the United States of America. And in fact, you can see the seeds of this great idea taking form on Twitter earlier this month. Continued, sexual assault, so why would I do it? My corpophilia proves I lied in the chat log. I don't receive analingus, etc. He is setting up the bulwark, the, the latest the foundation for what is going to be his brilliant legal maneuver. And in fact, he gave us a preview of what that's going to be. A piece of evidence that once the jury sees it, is going to set him free. And I'd like to share that with you right now. But there are some issues. YouTube isn't going to let me play this video as it is. I'm going to have to only give you the audio. Now, I will do my best to commentate what is visually happening on screen so you can follow along. If you want to see the full video, I will link to a thread that has the WebM of it, and you can go and watch this real-life Perry Mason, this Phoenix Wright, put together a defense that is just stunning. And the video seems to be starting with hey, a Yeti somehow filming Nick itself with a camcorder. That's a remarkable feat. I'm not sure why it's starting um, like that, but I'm not the genius attorney. Because I've been accused of sexually assaulting my sister, and this is uh, me trying to prove that I didn't. Um, part of the reason that I think, uh, they think I did it is because of this chat log, uh, This would be the chat log we just read with Anna, the, the heartbreaker. I told my friend that I did, uh, molest my sister. Um, and even though I've came out multiple times to say that this was a lie and that I actually didn't, uh, they, nobody believes me. But, the Yeti appears um, to be slightly confused, uh, spinning the camera around a little bit. One thing um, that I can prove was definitely a lie in the chat log is that um, I mentioned in it that uh, I didn't do anal with her because uh, she had feces in her butt. And um, everybody knows that I'm a coprophiliac, so this wouldn't have stopped me. If I were to molest somebody... I definitely would have done anal no matter what. And I can prove that I'm a coprophiliac because here is my toilet. He's pointing his camera into a toilet that is filled with shit. Um, and I'm going to touch the feces and masturbate with it. So, um, I don't know how to set up. He's now set the camera down with an angle at the toilet as he stands over it. As you can see, or actually I guess I should use this hand. My hand is clean right now. But it won't be in a minute. Okay, nothing on it. The Eddie is now dipping its paw into the toilet to retrieve the fecal matter. And now I'm holding feces. Can you see it? Oh crap, it's falling on the floor. It seems to be having some issues. Poop is slippery. Okay, so... The Yeti is now waving the shit in its hand to get the water off of it. I'm undoing my pants. It's hard to do this one-handed, though. 
The Yeti is now attempting to take its cargo wow. pants off. Confusing as to why it's wearing pants, but nonetheless. The Yeti is using one paw to unzip its pants while the other grips tightly on the fecal matter it pulled out of the toilet. The Yeti is now sitting on the toilet, exposing its naked genitals at the camera, and seems to have an incredibly small penis. If you imagine two Tic Tacs lined up end to end, and then the person that put them on the table got hungry and ate one of the Tic Tacs, that's pretty much what you're looking at. It's a single Tic Tac. So, now it's all over my penis. I don't know if you can see it. At this point, I'm unsure if the Yeti means his penis or the poop. Uh, it was requested that I film myself actually masturbating, but I'm not really, uh, I'm not really aroused right now too much. Um, ever since I started on my medication, uh, my in Vegas Astena, I haven't been able to masturbate like on command. So the Yeti appears to be sad. Yeah, but um. Anyway, hopefully this is proof enough that I'm a copophiliac, and that proves that I couldn't have uh, molested my sister because of, uh, you know. Case closed. Because, you know, smearing shit all over my genitals clearly indicates that I'm incapable of molesting children. That is a slam dunk. So I say to you, the viewer, what do you think? We have Nick Bates, a man who has openly expressed on the internet that he is in fact a pedophile, who has openly admitted that he's had sexual conversations with his half-sister, who was a preteen at the time, who admitted to a woman he was in love with that he had engaged in sexual activities with that minor. He's written songs, expressing his desire to rape and have sex with children. I think when you add all these things up, it's pretty clear that he is... guilty? You know what? Fuck it. Free hat, McCullough.